Ooh, okay, yeah. Um, I need a haircut. This is uh, getting a little out of control. See, my hair grows out, not down, so I can't have glorious hair like Steve. I have to have whatever this is. And I don't use products or anything. It just, it just does this every morning. It's like a third child. This here is the NZXT H5 Flow. And Flow, by this point, I'm sure you know, means that it has, uh, well, some airflow properties, things I think that most of you will like by this point. <laughs> airflow is still a huge thing for cases in 2022, and rightfully so. This one, I have a pretty good feeling, is gonna be one of my favorite of the year, just judging by the product photos, and some of the things that NZXT's optimized for this chassis. Are you ready? We're gonna talk all about it and build in it in this video. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. So let's see what we've got here. I can already see the very airflow centric front panel, which is always nice in NGXT's flow lineup. Let's see, I'm curious how large this is compared to the H7 series because the H7 cases were, ah, God, always happens. The H7 cases were already pretty sweet sizes. And um, well, I'm, I'm kind of curious how much smaller they can make it without sacrificing too much in the way of hardware support. Three days later. Right away you can tell, airflow oriented for sure, very large perforations and a dust filter to boot behind that. Uh, it doesn't extend all the way down, so it looks like this is only going to be a two fan mount up front, which is similar to what we've seen in the H510 lineup. Now one thing I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of right out of the gate is how dark this glass is. I just, I do not understand why dark tinted glass is a thing. It's just it's just not my cup of tea. Why on earth would you want it to be this dark so that you can barely see just the LEDs of certain things in here, but you can't actually see the components. The artwork itself is totally masked out. You might as well just put a solid left side panel here in its place. That's that's my take. I know not everyone's gonna agree with me, but uh, it does just irk me a bit. Also, why am I missing something? Why is this not popping out? There we go, okay. And uh, yeah, this actually looks very familiar in here. You'll still find the classic NCXT cable bar. At this point, it's kind of a wash. I don't think it's a huge deal that it's here. I maybe would like to see rubber grommets in its place, but it's a design aesthetic and it doesn't really hurt too much. You also see your 280 or up to 280 mil fan rad combo uh, bracket here that you can remove with two thumb screws. So that's nice ease of installation at the forefront. Something new you'll find in the H5 over the H510 is two fan mounts up top versus the traditional one. Now you can only fit 120s up here. You can't fit 140s. That's because this cable bar eventually gets in the way. Uh, so maybe a 240 mil AIO would be nice. It looks like clearance from the motherboard is going to be a bit tight, uh, but what NZXT's done is widen the case just a bit left to right to make more room for a bulky radiator assembly. Another difference you'll notice in the H5, the fact that these PCI slot covers are solid this time around. They are not perforated. Same goes for this area closer to the left side panel. No perforations at all. So very, I mean, pretty much like very minimal space for air to move into the case from the back. And that's actually gonna help, I think, with dust because what you'll traditionally see is a, a graphics card here pulling in air into the shroud. Some of that air does come from the front, but much of it comes from the back where it's typically unfiltered. Uh, there's just less resistance for the air to move in. So your case gets dirtier. Your graphics card temps usually are pretty solid, but uh, NZXT's got a workaround for this. All right, you ready? You gotta brace yourselves for this one. Uh, it's, it's a little weird, but I think it's pretty cool. NZXT have shoved a fan, um, yeah, down there in the basement. Whoops, wrong way, there we go. And uh, so this is actually a pretty unique fan mount. It's actually angled slightly. It's not laying perfectly flush, and I apologize, autofocus is gonna be a bit rough because uh, it's so dark down there. But uh, you can see there's a dust filter underneath that fan, so you're gonna have air being pulled in from the bottom of the case at a slight angle. Let me see if I can show you that angle. There you go. So roughly 30, 45 degrees or so from horizontal and all that fresh air, you guessed it, is going to be blowing straight into your graphics card. So uh, this should in theory help with graphics card temps 
a good bit. You're going to have direct air flow straight onto that card, whereas before, like I said, it was mostly passive. This would also explain why the top of the basement is not perforated. They don't want you flipping your power supply around to where it can pull in air from above, which is something that actually a lot of people still do. Uh, this way, all of the air coming in from that bottom facing fan is gonna be just unimpeded. It's not gonna be pulled in a uh, downward direction by the power supply. It shouldn't be pulled upward too high depending on what uh, cooler assembly you've got for your CPU. Uh, it's just gonna continue in this direction and then be sucked up by the graphics card in question. So. Um, Really cool. Again, it's more like a wind tunnel effect. I'm interested to see uh, how this actually plays out in the real world. As a result of this fan's location, you can't mount a three and a half inch hard disk drive or something along those lines down below. That cage no longer exists because again, the fan is there. So what you can do instead is mount a single three and a half inch drive here, and then you can mount a two and a, uh, two and a half inch drive next to it. You could just stick two and a half inch drives pretty much anywhere you want. But uh, yeah, the three and a half inches is the most important because again, you get spinning platters there that you wanna make sure are stationary at all times. So at least you get one place to mount that fan uh, or to mount that drive. And then for power supply, yeah, pretty decent size, nothing super long. Uh, you can check out the specs on their website if you're curious about fitment, but uh, most conventional, ATX units should fit just fine. Last thing to highlight then, front IO, it is pretty minimal, just like it was in the H510. You get a power button, which I'm assuming is gonna have a baked in LED. You get one USB type A port, I'm assuming that's 3.0, and one type C port, along with a uh, unified microphone headphone jack. That's literally it. I'm opting for the AM4 platform. This uh, assembly here is pretty much all blacked out, which I think will look really good with the black case. I believe you can get this in white as well. Let's see. And to that end, now that I've mentioned it, the white variant has clear tempered glass. I'm pretty sure. I don't know why they didn't stick with clear for both, but uh, yeah. So if that's as big a deal to you as it is to me, maybe you want to consider the white one instead. That looks really good. This, by the way, is NZXT's new air cooler. she is all put together and she just looks so clean and this isn't really a testament to anything I've done here I think the case is what's really making this I just threw the parts in uh, NZX has been doing this obviously for a very long time in my opinion they have some of the most aesthetically pleasing cases on the market maybe not the most functional although this one certainly is uh, hardware limitations aside you got to know that going into it uh, to me this just this is one of the best looking mid towers out there and when paired with the right combination of hardware I think that the, you know you, you really just can't go wrong with a case like this the h5 is, is really good looking and it can trace its roots all the way back to the s340 there are many s340 traits in this case including overall dimensions very similar to the original s340 so it's great to see nzx hasn't changed too much in the way of design but they've increased functionality along the way now this has a great airflow and plenty of additional hardware support at that now it's time to fire this thing up and run a few temperature tests now i'm not going to get super anal about temps because other channels already are i really don't care but uh, I do want to mess around a bit with this intake fan. We're going to try a few different positions. We might also open up the back a bit and see how temperatures for our graphics card change. So let's go ahead and power this thing on and uh, see what happens. A few moments later. Well, in a weird twist of events, uh, this motherboard that we put into the rig is dead. And I think it died when we were testing this thing with a defective CPU in one of our Fixer Flop episodes. That's unfortunate because this is a brand new board sent from Gigabyte specifically for Fixer Flop builds. I figured I'd just throw this into uh, the NZXT rig just because yeah, why not? But uh, yeah, I couldn't get this thing to post at all. And I had uh, gone so far as to swap the CPU, swap the power supply, even the graphics card. Turns out it's this thing. So I swapped in an X570S from Gigabyte. And right now we are running the benchmarks. And I'm pretty sure earlier in the video I said Passmark when I meant Furmark for our burn-in GPU test. I'm actually just using ID64. Uh, this way I can better monitor temperatures over time. And uh, at this point we're stressing literally everything in the system. So I'll be able to give you some CPU temperatures as well as graphics card temperatures, both at the diode a piece. Uh, right now, this first test is about to finish. I'm only gonna run these for about 15 minutes. We're air cooled. I've got the left side panel on and I've made sure that the temperature in this room is not changing in between tests. So let's kick things off with our control and ID64, stressing everything except for local disks, which really 
won't impact much of anything. Uh, we've got CPU diode temps reaching anywhere between 83 and 84 degrees Celsius. Uh, GPU diode temps reached 69 degrees Celsius. I don't think it ever hit 70 degrees. And we uh, definitely want to remember this number because the replacement of this fan, we're about to see in the second set of tests, uh, will impact GPU temps, though by really uh, not, not a lot. I mean, we're talking one degree Celsius here. So that's right. So 70 degrees Celsius was the change. That's a one degree Celsius, uh, Celsius delta. And the CPU temperature remained exactly the same. Again, between 83 and 84, it often fluctuated. I think this is, um, I mean, if you, if you really wanted to chalk this up to the margin of error, I think you'd be justified in doing so. It's a very, very small difference. If we had allowed these two tests to run for longer than 60 minutes, I'm sure the numbers would have diverged. So nothing super substantial, a bit disappointing, but again, I, I'm pretty happy that NZXT decided to go this route. It is different, and I think there are ways to better optimize this in future iterations for sure. Now, the third set of tests, I want, wanted to take this a step further, see if we could get GPU temps to lower any more uh, by reverting back to the stock setup. So the front fan was back at the bottom, pulling air in directly toward the graphics card shroud. But I wanted this time to remove the rear PCI slot covers. Remember earlier, NZXT decided to completely seal this off in order to prevent uh, dust from getting in from the rear, from that passive air from moving in to the graphics card from the back. Uh, but what this I think does in turn is prevent the heat being dumped by the graphics card um, from exiting the case efficiently. So because it can't be evacuated, it just sits there and lingers and that can cause temps to slowly rise over time. Removing all five remaining PCI slot covers and the uh, cover next to the slots actually lowered graphics card temps by two degrees Celsius, down to 67 degrees at peak. That I think is pretty substantial. I mean, you compare that to a traditional setup with a front intake fan uh, at the lower side of the case. I mean, that's a three degree difference, two degrees with the uh, unorthodox layout NZXT's given us. That is, that's really something. So maybe in the future, uh, this could be revised a bit. I mean, we're talking about slot covers here, not a big deal, but uh, something I'm really glad I tested. I had a feeling too much hot air was being trapped down here. And uh, so it's great to see that uh, we could very easily remedy this if we were looking for an extra degree Celsius or two to cool our graphics card. So uh, that was interesting. Again, fun to experiment a tad with um, a case that has uh, pretty unique airflow properties. I really like what NGXT has done. I mean, despite the fact that it doesn't really change temperatures all that much, I think it's a unique approach. And this certainly will, I expect, uh, solve a bit of dust collection issues over time, a lot of folks don't like cleaning their rigs and they'll let dust build up for several years, which um, drives me nuts, but it is what it is. In fact, I have personally a few rigs that I really need to clean. It's been well over a year, I'm ashamed to say. Uh, so I'm sure most of us, if not all of us have been there and uh, a case layout like this can definitely cut back on dust. At the expense, maybe of a few degrees Celsius, uh, just the way things are blocked off at the rear. I it's up to you if you think that's worth it or not. Again, very easy to fix this just by removing slot covers, but it doesn't really look all that great aesthetically. Um, we've also got the issue of the tempered glass, which uh, again, might not be an issue to you, but it definitely is to me. I hate how dark this tempered glass is. I also do not know why it is. Am I removing this wrong? Like, why is it so difficult to get this front or this side panel off? I don't know. I feel like it's been easier in some of the older cases. Maybe it's just a, I don't know, maybe it's just my sample. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed seeing this case being built in. I think that the rig looks really nice. Again, uh, the aesthetics of this case are spot on. The H5 is definitely a case I would personally build in if I was looking for something around $100 uh, price tag. I think the H5 Flow is uh, definitely one to consider. Now, there's a lot of really good stuff out there. Be Quiet has good cases. The 500DX, the one I'm using now, there's a lot of really good Lee and Lee cases, Corsair cases. The 4000D Airflow is another one that comes to mind, the 220T Airflow. So um, there's a lot to look out for. This is another competitor, and I definitely think it checks a lot of the important boxes. With that, if you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Again, let me know in the comment section below what you think about the NZXT H5, uh, H5. H5 and uh, which variant you're interested in. I imagine the H5 flow is gonna be the popular one and uh, what you would change if anything about this case as it stands. Again, consider subscribing, consider liking, disliking, doing all that mess. Uh, join us on Patreon, uh, Discord, all that stuff's in the description and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Craig, thanks for learning with me.